we're uh, we're very pleased to have uh, one of our uh, colleagues presenting a novel and I hope useful approach to stress testing financial institutions. Um, and uh, she is a uh, has just about finished her PhD at at Stern and is uh, will be starting to work for the New York Fed in uh, this summer. Um, and so she's going to have a chance to carry on this uh, research with her. And actually, we uh, may hear more about it from uh, from that point of view as well. So we're extremely pleased to have uh, the the talented uh, Hyun Young to talk about her the investigation of stress testing in financial institutions for climate risk. Thank you. So it's up for you. Thank you for your introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, so thank you so much for inviting me to this conference and I'm very excited to present our paper, Climate Stress Testing. So understanding the impact of climate change on financial stability is very important question for researchers, regulators, and banks. So how could climate related shocks impose systemic risk on financial sector? If banks systemically suffer substantial losses from abrupt increase in either transition risks or physical risks, then climate change can affect financial stability. So the transition risks come from the changes in policies as economies transition into less carbon intensive environment and physical risks come from the damages to property following the extreme weather events. And one of the key questions here is about the quantification of the systemic risk. So the question is how can we estimate bank's capital shortfall following a climate-related shock? This is the research question of our paper. So in our paper, we develop a climate stress testing methodology to test the resilience of financial institutions to climate-related risks. So our methodology involves three steps. The first step is to measure the climate risk factor. And the second step is to estimate the time varying climate beta of banks. So each bank's climate beta will measure the bank's exposure to the climate risk factor that we measured in the first step. And the last step is to compute systemic climate risk using the climate beta that we estimated in the previous step. And we are going to call the systemic climate risk C-risk, and C-risk is the expected capital shortfall of banks in a climate stress scenario. And we use this methodology, we apply this methodology to large global banks to study their climate-related risk exposure. Okay. And here are the key findings. First, we find that the climate beta and sea risk substantially increased during 2020. So the aggregate sea risk of the top four US banks went up by $360 billion. And this corresponds to about 40% of their market cap during 2020. And second, in a decomposition analysis, we find that the increase in sea risk during 2020 was primarily due to decrease in equity values of the banks as opposed to the bank's debt deterioration or increase in climate risk. And after looking at this result, we thought maybe banks were already under stress in 2020 without any climate stress. So we looked into the C-risk, um, the expected capital shortfall of banks under zero climate stress scenario. So to measure the effect of the climate stress, we compare the sea risk with the non-stress sea risk. And we find that the, the aggregate sea risk of the top four US banks was actually higher than the non-stress sea risk by $245 billion. 
So that suggests that the effect of the climate stress was economically large. And lastly, we find that the banks with high exposure, high exposure to gas and oil loans had higher climate beta and higher C risk. So this corroborates the economic validity of our measure. Okay. So now let me um, go over each step of our methodology in detail. So the first step is to measure the climate risk factor. And there can be many ways to do this, but we use Litterman's stranded asset portfolio return as a measure of transition risk. So the stranded asset portfolio is composed of 30% long position in energy ETF and 70% long position in coal ETF. And it's normalized by S&P 500 index. And what you see here is the cumulative return of the stranded asset portfolio. And you can see that um, it has been falling since 2011. And we interpret this underperformance of the stranded asset portfolio return as an increase in transition risk. And for the time period when the coal ETF was not available, we used a portfolio of long position in energy ETF and short position in S&P 500 index. That's the gray line here and here. Okay, so this was the first step. And once we have this climate risk factor, then we can estimate each bank's climate beta. So the climate beta is the bank's stock return sensitivity to the climate factor that we just measured in the previous step here. So we use the two factor model for bank stock return. The first factor is the market factor and the second factor is the climate fa factor from the first step. And we estimate this dynamically. So we allow for volatility and correlation to be time varying. And generally, um, for, the, uh, for the large banks with large exposure to gas and oil loans, we expect the climate beta to be positive. But we also think that it's possible to see negative climate betas for banks with large exposure to renewable energy, for instance. So this was the second step. And here is the result. So this is the time series of the climate beta of 10 large US banks. So first of all, you can see that the climate beta has moved around, which suggests that it's important to estimate this dynamically. And if we look into the estimate, you can see that first the climate beta started off from zero, and then it fell into negative territory here in the beginning of the financial crisis and it gradually went up and you can see that there was a spike in 2020 in which the energy prices collapsed. And um, to explain a little bit more on the negative data here. Um, so in the beginning of the financial crisis, the oil and gas prices were on the rise while everything else was falling. So um, the climate beta, so the gray line here is the return on the stranded asset portfolio rising and the red line is the financial sector's performance. And this is why we are seeing climate negative climate beta in the beginning of the financial crisis. Okay. And we did the same exercise for other countries. So, here are the climate betas of the UK banks. And um, the climate betas of UK banks were um, on average a little bit higher than the US banks, but you can see a similar, the similar pattern here, um, the beta becoming negative in the beginning of the financial crisis. And you can see that the betas are rising in 2020. And we did the same exercise for other countries, um, Canada, you can see the spike here again in 2020. And this is for Japanese banks. Again, the climate betas are rising. And this is um, the climate betas of French banks. And you can again see that the climate betas are spiking up in 2020. So those were the climate beta estimates. And once we have those, then we can compute the C risk. 
We follow the S-risk methodology and the C-risk is defined as the expected capital shortfall conditional on the climate stress. And it's a function of D, which is the book value of debt, and W, which is the market capitalization of bank, and um, long run marginal expected shortfall, which is the expected equity loss conditional on the climate stress. That's this term here. And you can see that the climate beta is included in this term. And this K is the prudential level of equity relative to assets, and we set it as 8%. And um, the theta is the climate stress level, and we calibrate it to 50%. And this negative 50% corresponds to the 1% quantile of six month return on the stranded asset portfolio. So our stress scenario is the 50% fall in the stranded asset portfolio over a six month time period. So let me show you the results. So the, these are the C risks estimates of the US banks. So the positive numbers means that there was a, an expected capital shortfall of the banks and the negative numbers can be interpreted as excess reserves. And I um, would like to highlight, I, I would like to emphasize that the C risk is not a sole function of the climate beta. So the, a bank with high climate beta in the earlier plot may have low C risk if the bank is sufficiently capitalized. And I also want to highlight that the C, risk are, uh, C risks are rising in 2020. And again, this pattern was common for other countries as well. So here are the C risks of UK banks. Um, you can see that um, in 2020, they are rising. And that was same for Canadian banks and Japanese banks, as well as the French banks. So we zoomed into 2020 to see what happened. So on the left hand side, what you see here is the C risk of the US banks in 2020. And you can see that the C risks went up substantially in the at the end of the first quarter of 2020. Um, so for instance, Citibank C risk was almost zero and then it spiked up to almost $100 billion. And on the right hand side, what you see is the table of loan exposure to gas and oil industry of these banks. And you can see that the rankings are although they are not perfectly aligned, but the rankings were pretty much consistent. So in terms of the C-risks, the top four banks were the Citibank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, and JP Morgan, and those were the top four on the right-hand side table. And similarly, um, in the UK, the top, um, bank, top two banks in terms of the C-risk were the HSBC and the Barclays. And you can see that those were the top two on the right-hand side table again. And um, to understand um, what's driving the increase in the C-risk in 2020, we did a decomposition analysis. So we decompose the change in C-risk into three components. The first component is coming from the debt deterioration. And the second component is coming from the equity deterioration. And the last part is coming from um, higher volatility or correlation. And um, we have the result here for the US banks. And the first column here is the C-risk at the end of 2019. And the second column here is the series at the end of 2020. And the next column is the change during 2020. And you can see that for the largest banks, the series went up substantially. And if I add up these four um, changes um, the, of the large, largest banks, it adds up to $360 billion. And about 75% 75, 75 of this increase in C-risk is coming from the debt deterioration here. 
And we did the same exercise for the UK banks and the increase in C risk of the, the five banks in the UK added up to $140 billion. And more than half of it was again coming from the equity deterioration. So looking at this, these results, we thought this might imply that the banks were already under stress without any climate stress in 2020. So that, lead, uh, that leads to this um, analysis, which is the comparison of the C-risk with the non-stressed C-risk. So the non-stressed C-risk is the expected capital shortfall, shortfall of banks under zero climate stress. So basically this difference is capturing the effect of the climate stress. And um, these are the differences of the top 10 um, US banks. And you can see that the gap opened up in 2019 and the difference, um, um, the difference was large at the end of 2020. And these add up to about um, $250 billion. So we think that um, the effect of the, of the climate stress was large. And finally, um, we looked into the um, gas and oil expo loan exposure of these banks and um, we confirmed the positive relationship between the climate beta on the y-axis and the uh, active gas and oil loans exposure log of the gas and oil loans on the x-axis, and you can see that um, the relationship is positive. So, which means that the banks with higher exposure to gas and oil loans have higher climate data, and we think this um, result corroborates um, the econ economic validity of our measure. And we also test this, tested this idea formally um, in a regression analysis. So we regressed um, the change in the climate beta on the um, on the new on the bank's new syndicated loans to gas and oil industry in each quarter, and we confirm um, the positive relationship across different specifications. So to conclude, um, in this paper, we develop a climate stress testing methodology to test the resilience of financial institutions to climate related risk. Specifically, we introduce a measure called C-risk, um, which is the expected capital shortfall of a financial institution in a climate stress scenario. The stress scenario that we considered was the 50% fall in the return on the stranded asset portfolio. And we find that the climate beta and sea risk substantially went up during 2020, primarily due to decrease in equity values. And we find that the effect of the climate stress was large. And finally, we confirm that the banks with higher exposure to gas and oil loans have higher climate beta and sea risk. So we hope um, this would be a useful complement to other stress testing methodologies. Thank you. Thanks so much, Hyun, for a terrific paper and presentation.